Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Salem and Baldwin United Methodist Church. Our call to worship today is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Our prayer of confession and words of comfort. Hear the word of God. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Let us now pause with a minute of silence to consider our sins before God. Hear now the words of comfort. Lord, you know us so well, inside and outside. Our actions, our thoughts, and our desires are all before you. We also know your mercy, your great mercy, that forgives all our sins. We turn away from sin and self to go to our Father again, to return to our only home. Your grace invites us, calling us from this world of disruptions and separations. We enter into your house where there is rejoicing forevermore. Even after a long night of tears, your word proclaims that joy comes in the morning. Thank you, Lord, for visiting us again with your grace. We are your children, and your Holy Spirit keeps us forever as your own. Amen. And now let us pray together the words that Jesus gave his disciples. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading is Daniel 9, 17 through 19. Now therefore, O our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and his supplication. And for your own sake, Lord, let your face shine upon your desolated sanctuary. Incline your ear, O my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolation and the city that bears your name. We do not present our supplication before you on the grounds of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act and do not delay. For your own sake, O oh my God, because your city and your people bear your name. The message today is titled, Power Prayer, Power Prayer. This is the beginning of a new series titled, Salem Roots Camp Meeting 2020. And it's Salem Roots because we're looking back at a long history of Methodism and of Salem and Baldwin United Methodist Church. 
as we celebrate 150 years from 1870 to 2020, 150 years of worshiping in one place, of worshiping one God in one place with one group of people. And so we're also not only looking back, but we're looking ahead. As you all know, history is one of my chief loves. And I believe history is something that we have to have. It's not an option. I, I think about, as an analogy, driving a car. Well, you're driving down the road and you have a rear view mirror and you have side view mirrors. Have you seen anyone driving who never looks in the rear view mirror or the side mirrors? I'd call that person a dangerous driver. And also I think for the church today in 2020, if we're unable to look back and see history, we're unable to really see ahead. But also if you see someone driving and they're only <laughs> looking in the rear view mirror and side mirrors, equally dangerous. Watch out. They're going to run you over. So we need to have a balance. We need to be able to look ahead and look behind and reflect upon our rich heritage as Methodists. And part of that heritage is camp meetings. And camp meetings we will see as part of our own congregation here is a necessity because of the coronavirus. Because of a pandemic we have been social distancing. We have been outdoors, away from people, not indoors, close up. But also, years ago, the camp meeting was an important part of the church life. And people would come from year, miles and miles to go to the camp meeting. Hundreds, thousands of people would come to the camp meeting. And it would be a time of revival. Brothers and sisters, be in expectation of the great things God can do through us and in us and for us. We're going to see some miracles. I believe the Holy Spirit is able to bring us again to life. Revive us again, O Lord. So camp meeting shows the place and it's outdoors but it's also a place where the Spirit blows, that wind of the Spirit blows upon our lives to give us new life. So I'm in expectation of what God is able to do through us. Our text today is Daniel chapter 9, verses 17 to 19. It's about hearing God's voice. It seems pretty easy in the first part of Daniel to hear God's voice. These are young men who have to make a decision. They have to stand up for God or for an idol. They have to make a decision about the food they eat. Will they be faithful to God or will they be unfaithful? And when it comes time to pray, will you bow down to an idol or will you only kneel before God Almighty? Decisions. Those are easy enough to watch, to see, easy enough to understand. These young men are far away from home. They are part of a nation that has drifted away from God. And so when they get so far from God, they find themselves far away from home. Exile. That's what Israel encountered. A time of nearly 70 years. And exile took the best of the young generation and made them prisoners. They had to study foreign cultures and languages. They had to serve a foreign king. And they were told to bow down to foreign gods. And they said no. You see, the reason they said no was because of their faith. Faith matters the most. And we see with Daniel and the three young men, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, their Hebrew names. They had Babylonian names that we somehow know more, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel's name was Belteshazzar. 
These four young Jewish men would not bow down. No money could buy their hearts. No power could twist their minds. They were able to worship only one God, Yahweh. So we read about the fiery furnace. We read about the lion's den. They would not bow. They were faithful, not faithless. But after chapters 1 to 6, we move on to the second part of Daniel, which is all visions. And sorry to say, most people don't know the visions. Because they're a little bit nervous about Daniel and Revelation that talk a lot about the end times. You see, stories are easy to hear and understand, but visions are not so easy to understand. They can be misunderstood. In the middle of the visions, though, we have chapter 9. An important chapter because in the middle we hear a prayer. So if you want to know the one difference between faithful and faithless, it's prayer. Prayer is the connection between God and me. What keeps me going His way? Prayer. So let's listen to Daniel pray. You see, in the middle of a world where people are walking away from God, in the middle of a generation when people are choosing things over God, it's important for us to be faithful. And prayer will keep us faithful. Daniel is known for being faithful to the Lord. So, as the Sunday school song goes, do you dare to be a Daniel? First point is listen. Listen, Daniel's prayer is powerful. It's powerful enough to say, God, listen to my prayer. When you pray and know that God hears you, that's powerful. Listen means that God who made us is able to hear us. That's a relationship. You see, in the Old Testament, it seemed that God was speaking all the time to his people, telling them what to do. But when God gives us a chance to talk, what do we say? What do we talk about? We need to learn how to use our mouths to pray and how to speak to God so that He will listen. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. I just spent 18 years in South Korea. South Koreans are known for being people of prayer. They have an early morning prayer service, just like all Christians used to have. Their early morning prayer started out at 4 a.m. and then it was adjusted to 5 and then 6 and sometimes 7 a.m. But people get up early in the morning, especially in the countryside, they go to church before it's light. Before they go to the fields, they go to church to pray early, early in the morning. And one of the things that you hear Korean Christians say before they begin their time of corporate prayer in the sanctuary is three times they say, Lord. In Korean, Chuyo, 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 Lord, Lord, Lord. I remember asking pastors and even professors, by the way, you guys always say it three times. Can you tell me why? Uh, well, we've just been doing that forever. But, but, but where do you get that? Is it from the Bible? Or where is it from? And then I discovered, not like Columbus, but I discovered Daniel 9, verses 17 to 19. And you see there three times, and in the Korean text, it says, Juyo, Juyo, Lord, Lord, Lord. You see, I am speaking to God and He hears me. What a privilege. What an opportunity. God hears me. Hallelujah. You see, faith, power prayer is God hearing me. But what does He hear? He hears my prayers. I'm beginning to wonder, are we really thinking about how we pray? what we ask for. Because sometimes our prayer can be like what? A shopping list. Now, I have to make one of those shopping lists every time I go to the store. Because I have a bad habit. 
and my wife catches me every time when I come back with the groceries. You bought that? Why did you get that? We don't need that. We've got three of that in the fridge already. Because I just wander around and fill up the cart. That's my mission. Fill up the cart. Fill up the cart. And sometimes our prayer is a shopping list prayer. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me God. And we go through the list. We pray for this and this and this and this and this. Without really our heart being engaged. Without really asking God, is this something I need? Because there's a big difference in life between wants and needs. And if you look at the Lord's Prayer as a model for prayer, we're asking for our daily bread, the things we need. But sometimes we want things we don't need. So for Israel, they learned to pray for their nation, for their people. You see, Daniel's prayer is not for himself alone, not just his friends and family. It's for his nation, his people. You see, he read in Jeremiah the prophet that exile was going to be 70 years. And he prayed to God, he fasted, and he's asking, God, may it not be 70 years. You see, Daniel's prayers were so big. He prayed for his nation and he prayed for the future to change. So how big are our prayers? Do you pray for America? Do you pray for this planet? Brothers and sisters, the one thing that this pandemic is doing is it's making us aware that we're all in this together. It's not like a plane that gets shot down and you say, well, how many Americans were killed? The pandemic is all nations, all people, old and young. Every state in this nation is being affected. It's not just Florida and the hurricane. It's not just California and the earthquake. We're all in this together. So we have to pray at a national scale. Second, forgive. Power prayer always includes the confession of sins. I believe every time we gather together, we must pray a confession of sins sins. When we're weak and worn down in our sins, we know how powerful God is to forgive and deliver. Daniel understood, though, that sin was not a small matter. It was a big obstacle. It was something in the way, something between God and me. It has to go. Just like David when he prayed his prayer of confession in Psalm 51, he says, against you, who? Uriah? Against you, who? Against God. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. David understood and Daniel understood that we have to confess our sinners. We are sinners. We have a disease called sin. Only God can heal us. You see, we need to confess not only our physical needs, but our spiritual needs. And God can forgive. God can forgive. And that was the troubling thing about Jesus' ministry. If you remember, many times he got in trouble because he said, your sins are forgiven. And people weren't really paying attention to his healing people's bodies. But when he said, your sins are forgiven, hey, grab him. That's blasphemy. Brothers and sisters, forgiveness of sins is such a powerful gift from God. Receive it. How do you receive it? By confessing. Confess and you can receive. The third point is hear and act. Again, Daniel tells the Lord to listen to his prayer. But the real power of prayer is when God acts. Our words can connect to God's actions. O oh Lord, listen. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hear and act. Our God is a God who acts. He's the God of action. 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 That's God. He's not so far away that He cannot hear and not so far away that He cannot touch. All through the Old Testament, the people of God knew that God was a God of action. I mean, they saw God in action. What did He do to the Egyptians? 
How did he rescue them? What did he do to that Red Sea? Moses kept mentioning that God saved them by his mighty hand and his outstretched arm. And now Daniel says the same thing in his prayer. Let's look again, Daniel 9.15. Now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Peter wrote to the Christians scattered abroad these words. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. 1 Peter 5.6 mighty God, almighty God. He has the power. He is able. Able to change history. Change the world. Change my family. Change my job. Change my heart. God is acting to change us. And part of that change, as Peter said, was for us to what? Bow down. Aren't you always told to stand up straight? What's this about bowing down? Show ourselves humble before God. And God will lift us up. Pick us up. He will carry us. Brothers and sisters, prayer changes things. Because He's the mighty God. Conclusion. Many times we've heard prayer lead with that word, Lord, Lord. Power prayer is not a ritual. It's not a routine. But it's a real heart cry to God. The only one who can answer your cry for help is God Almighty. And I believe God is able and He's willing to save, to heal, and to deliver. Only God has that kind of power. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, mighty God, that you have bestowed blessings upon us as a people. And we do cry aloud. We pray your blessing, your strength for our time of need. And now may that amazing grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that great, powerful love of our Father God, and that sweet communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forever. Amen. Announcement. We have a weekly Bible study on the Gospel of John. You can find the Bible study video on our church's Facebook page and on the YouTube channel. Listen and learn.